So today we are going to talk a bit about these topics. Um, basically, it's my continuous improvement uh, story at Tico Experts, and I hope this should also be useful to you. Um, so when I was uh, 15, 15 years old, I had a teacher that called me a uh, dark horse, and I was like, huh? what? Is that a compliment? Um, so I googled a bit, and it's actually an, an English expression for someone that you would not bet on, on him or her, but ends up winning the race. So it was a compliment. Um, so why is this relevant? So this is relevant because uh, fast forward more than 10 years, I got hired at Equal Experts, and they only hire experts. So senior profiles with at least eight years of experience, and I joined as a tester with zero years of experience. So basically, my boss saw the potential in me and made a bet on a dark horse, and I'm trying to make sure that he wins that bet. So as you know, I had no prior knowledge of testing at the time, and uh, honestly, I feel like my knowledge so far is kind of like a Swiss cheese full of air bubbles, and I'm not happy with it, and I know that I need to improve it. So the most straightforward way could be to do like a testing course or a certification. Um, there's one for testers, but the testing community is not really, has mixed feelings about it. Uh, some say it's too rigid, others say it's a bit outdated, um, and there are more problems with it. So if I would do uh, the um, certificate, I would be focusing on intensity. I would be learning a lot in a short period of time. And we all have done like one day or one week workshops and we know how that works in the end. It's not that great. Um, and Bruce Lee has a quote about this saying, I do not fear the man who trains 1,000 different kicks one time. I fear the man who trains 1,000 times the same kick. So in this case, focusing on frequency. And I kind of agree with that. And I decided to do a testing course, do as in make, so making my own testing course, therefore the learning by teaching. Um, so my forecast is that it's going to take at least one year. I know it's crazy, but again, we are focus I'm focusing on frequency, so doing small bits of work every day. And I'm treating the whole thing as a learning opportunity. So it's not really just learning testing, but learning other things as I go along. Because I'm a uh, believer on serendipity, so learning things that at the first glance seem unrelated or uh, useless, but then in the end, you, they might be helpful in the future, like Steve Jobs with connecting the dots. So I made the jump. I started the GitHub repo. It's public and available to anyone. Um, in the longer term, this means that uh, other people will be able to contribute and give feedback. And that means that the work that I started will continue uh, up to date and also unbiased because more people will start um, contributing. In, it's not only my view. So this is uh, an example. Uh, I did the first uh, search about what were the main topics in testing. And basically, I created a GitHub issue for each one of them. And along those two years, I've been collecting useful information about each of those topics, like blogs, uh, books, um, talks. So basically, each uh, of those topics has a list of useful links. And then I just group them into categories. Um, so then I have cohesive groups so that I can focus on one at each time. Then I created the boards in GitHub. Uh, so it's basically a Kanban board, uh, like any other Agile team, except this team has one member. Uh, and basically, this helps me uh, track my priorities, what I'm currently working on. And for an issue to go from doing to done, that means that I went through all the links, all the reference material that I have there, and I made a summary, like a digest of all the information and of all the point views, and then I close that one and I pick up the, the next in the list. I uh, mapped all those issues that you just saw to milestones, as you see there. Um, I've also tried using due dates. I tried it twice, I failed it twice. Uh, it didn't help me achieve more. Uh, however, that progress bar that you see there, for me, it gamifies the whole thing uh, because I'm a gaming fan and seeing that completion bar really tickles me and I want to get to 
to get the achievement of finishing that thing. Um, so for me, it's really working. Like any other project, I have continuous uh, integration. So I've used Travis to do all the boring work for me. So I have automated tasks like checking the spelling of the summary that I'm writing, also checking for broken links. And every time that I finish a, a topic, every time that I do a push, it just runs the, the check for me. Finally, I have continuous deployment. That basically means that through GitHub, uh, in this case, GitHub pages, the latest version of my work is automatically pushed to that URL that you see there. And there's always um, available a URL with the latest version of my work. So if you have time, feel free to check it and also leave feedback or a star. It also helps me validate my work and also boosts my motivation. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, so, final thought is you'll uh, achieve a lot more if you keep the mindset of a student. So, if you stay humble and open to other ways of working or doing things, you will be continuously improving. And if you focus on competing against yourself and not against others, you'll have less frustration and you'll be making sure that today you are slightly better than you were yesterday. And it's, it's a lot more, it's a, uh, a competition a lot more healthier than being competing with others. Um, also, if you have time, uh, be a mentor, be a teacher to other people. It's a win-win, they win, uh, and you also win because you're um, consolidating the knowledge that you already have by teaching to others, and they, are, they have a mentor, they have someone to, to help them grow. And finally, um, bet on dark horses. You might be surprised in the end. Thanks for your time.